the King of Glory. He's coming on the clouds with fire. The whole earth shakes. The whole earth shakes. Yeah. I see his love and mercy washing over all our sin the people sing the people sing hosanna 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 in the highest hosanna 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 generation rising up to take their place with selfless faith with selfless faith see a near revival stirring as we pray and see we're on our knees we're on our Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the Open up my eyes to the things unseen. Show me how to love like you. Love me. Break my heart for what breaks yours. And everything I am for your kingdom's call. As I walk from earth in. Eternity. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna. Good morning. I'm glad that we get a chance to uh, hang out this morning on a very special day, Palm Sunday. Uh, I'm glad that you uh, are here, and uh, I know that uh, we're going to get a chance to worship uh, God together as we open up His words. I was hoping that we were going to have a personal testimony, but because uh, we are currently under a stay-at-home policy, uh, we will not be able to uh, do that. So as you can see, I am working uh, from home, but I do plan on having some of those testimonies as we uh, continue to move through this uh, life-changing uh, event. So we are going to open up God's Word today. Uh, Matthew, let's begin with Matthew uh, chapter uh, 20, uh, chapter 21 which is the account of Palm, Palm Sunday. Uh, let me pray and invite God's Holy Spirit. 
Uh, thank you, uh, Lord, for uh, joining us this morning on Palm Sunday. We ask that you would uh, bring these words uh, to life. Uh, help us to understand them. Uh, lead us, Lord, by your Holy Spirit. Thank you. In the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Uh, so who is this Jesus uh, on, the, on this Palm Sunday? Uh, let's, uh, let's read Matthew chapter 21, verses 1 through 11, and maybe we'll get an idea of who this Jesus is. Matthew 21, <clears throat> Now when they drew near to Jerusalem and came to Bethpage, to the Mount of Olives, then Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go into the village in front of you, and immediately you will find a donkey tied and a colt with her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, you shall say, The Lord needs them, and he will send them at once. This took place to fulfill what was spoken by the prophet, saying, Say to the daughter of Zion, Behold, your king is coming to you, humble and mounted on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a beast of burden. The disciples went and did as Jesus had directed them. They brought the donkey and the colt and put them on their cloaks, and he sat on them. Most of the crowd spread their cloaks on the road, and others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. And the crowds that went before him and that followed him were shouting, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And when he entered Jerusalem, the whole city was stirred up saying, Who is this? And the crowd said, This is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth of Galilee. This uh, triumphal entry of Jesus is recounted in all four uh, Gospels. <clears throat> they are all in agreement that it was a pretty spectacular uh, event. Uh, people are taking their coats off and, and laying them on the donkey. They place Jesus on top of this, uh, this donkey. Others take their coats off and they're laying them on the road. They're cutting branches and, and throwing these branches. One gospel says that they were these leafy branches uh, that they were putting on the road before Jesus as he makes his, as his parade moves down into uh, Jerusalem. I don't know if you can picture it or not, but uh, they're doing this and they're singing songs. Uh, they're shouting, they're shouting out, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Uh, uh, Hosanna in the highest. Can you imagine uh, that parade and what it looked like? Uh, in the Gospel of Luke, the Pharisees are, uh, see all of this taking place, and they and they say, "Listen, Jesus, you got to quiet your people down." And Jesus makes this great statement, saying, "Saying, saying in the effect, listen, if I tell these people to be quiet, the rocks are going to cry out." Uh, a spectacular event, but interestingly enough, did you know that they didn't quite grasp all that was happening? John's Gospel uh, tells us that the disciples didn't fully understand uh, all these things at first. With all the songs and shouting and cries of joy that were being made on their march down into Jerusalem, they didn't quite get it. Some did see him, of course, as the uh, miracle maker, and, and rightly so. Uh, many of them had been fed, uh, the feeding of the 5,000. Uh, Some maybe had been healed. Uh, others had witnessed uh, um, amazing uh, events at the hands of this Jesus. He is the miracle uh, maker. He is a, a prophet. He is the fulfillment of Old Testament scripture. He is uh, maybe this earthly king that we hope one day will sit on the throne of, of David. They heard all the miracles and they had some understanding of who he, who he was, but they didn't fully comprehend all that was happening. And the Bible tells us that some of these things were hidden from their eyes. They couldn't quite see the big uh, narrative uh, yet. They couldn't quite see the bigger story. As we enter into the Easter season, this new season, perhaps there is a bigger picture that God would want you to see. This life, uh, this rocky path that we're on, is a very long one, isn't it? And sometimes it's very bumpy. And I know for me, as a, as a, as a dad, as a husband, as a pastor, uh, it uh, personally and professionally, it has been a, a bit of a challenge. Uh, 
uh, this road is, is a long one, this way. Uh, in the book of Acts, Paul is uh, sharing part of his testimony with uh, the governor of Caesarea. And he says to them, I am a follower of the way. I have followed this way of Jesus. This is the road, uh, the journey that uh, I am on, I'm on. We know that our journey, our road that we're currently on is kind of a bumpy one. Back then, uh, in, that first, uh, in that first century, uh, they saw the way, at least some saw the way, as a, as a cult. I find it uh, almost uh, somewhat uh, comical now when I... I first started out in ministry, I was, I was asked, are you joining a cult? No, I'm, I'm simply following the way that Jesus is leading me. I'm, I'm following uh, in the direction that he would want me uh, to go. Well, it's been about 20 years, and, and I have to confess that I'm still wrestling to fully understand the greatness of Jesus. My faith in Christ and, and where life circumstances are right now are kind of meeting on this uh, rocky, bumpy road. I have to confess that I'm still uh, wrestling to fully understand the greatness of who this Jesus is. It's kind of like this. Uh, I'm on this journey, uh, this path uh, with Christ, and he's walking alongside me. And I've gotten to this, this crossroad. It's this, uh, in Maine, we call it this, uh, it's a frost heave, uh, where, the, where, the, where the pavement uh, uh, freezes uh, and then warms up again. And when it unfreezes, it creates a bump in the road. And usually there's a sign uh, telling you, slow down, look out, uh, there's quite a bump ahead. I haven't always listened to those signs. Well, that's where we are right now on our way, on our journey. Um, there's, a big, there's a big bump ahead, and God is giving us a warning sign. I'm convinced that as we approach this sign, there's a couple things that are going to take place. One, that this event, even though it's jarring and it's difficult uh, uh, for the moment, and, and I don't want to minimize the, 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 the coronavirus in any way. Some of you have been, uh, have been impacted by it. You may know someone who's sick right now. And, and, and it, is, it is certainly uh, something we need to be very, very concerned about. However, put in the grand scheme, the bigger meta narrative of, of this world, this will be a small event. I'm also convinced of this. That this Jesus, this Christ, this Son of God in whom we serve will dwarf all this event in all other events to come. Listen, this isn't a cult uh, that we're a part of. It's not a cult leader that we follow. It's not just a miracle worker. He's much greater than that. He's greater than simply a prophet or an earthly king. As we enter into this new season, perhaps there is a bigger picture to all of this. Perhaps there is a, a bigger picture of Jesus that you're just not quite looking at yet. Turn your Bibles now to Hebrews chapter 2, verses 5 through 18. For it was not to angels that God subjected the world to come, of which we are speaking. It has been testified somewhere, what is man that you are mindful of him, or the son of man that you care for him? You made him for a little while lower than the angels. You have crowned him with glory and honor, putting everything in subjection under his feet. Now in putting everything in subjection to him, he left nothing outside his control. At present, we do not see everything in subjection to him, but we see him who for a little while was made lower than the angels, namely Jesus, crowned with glory and honor because of the suffering of death, so that by the grace of God, he might taste death for everyone. They were under the impression that Jesus was an angel, and the writer of Hebrews is correcting their thinking, no, this Jesus is far bigger than the angels. For a time being, he was made lower than they. He was put on this earthly plane. He wore this flesh that you and I wear. Verse 10. For it was fitting that he, for whom and by whom all things exist, in bringing many sons and daughters to glory, should make the founder of their salvation perfect through suffering. 
For he who sanctifies and those who are sanctified all have one source. That is why he is not ashamed to call them brothers, saying, I will tell of your name to my brothers and sisters in the midst of the congregation. I will sing your praise. And again, I will put my trust in him. And again, behold, I and the children God has given me. Since therefore the children share in flesh and blood, he himself likewise partook of the same things that through death he might destroy the one who has the power of death, that is the devil, and deliver all those who through fear of death were subject to lifelong slavery. For surely it is not angels that he helps, but he helps the offspring of Abraham. Therefore he had to be made like his brothers and sisters in every respect, so that he might become a merciful and faithful high priest in the service of God to make propitiation, that means peace, that comes with a payment for the sins of the people. For because he himself has suffered when tempted, he is able to help those who are being tempted themselves. On that first Palm Sunday, as Jesus is making his way into Jerusalem, the people there are under the impression that this Jesus is a miracle worker. And he is a miracle worker. They are under the impression that he is a prophet. And he is a prophet. He speaks the words uh, of God. They are under the impression that he is an earthly king. Oh, goodness. He is far greater than an earthly king. Fourteen years later, uh, this growing uh, uh, group of, of followers are considered to be, those people who are on the way, they're considered to be a cult, and Jesus is considered to be their cult leader. When the book of Hebrews is written, there's an understanding or a belief that maybe this Jesus is an angel. Clearly, the writer of Hebrews corrects that logic. Jesus is far bigger than an angel. Than an angel. Other heresies will begin to uh, crop in over the years. Is this Jesus a, a man? Is he fully human? Is he God? Uh, who is this Jesus? I'm going to be exploring uh, the nature of Jesus over the next uh, several weeks. Uh, but here is one aspect of Jesus I'm hoping that you will get as you walk down your bumpy road. The writer of Hebrews communicates to us, shares with us, that we know Jesus is the founder of our salvation. On this Palm Sunday, we see him far greater than a miracle, simply a miracle worker. We see him far greater than a prophet and far greater than an earthly king, far greater than any angel. He is the founder of our salvation. He shares in the flesh and blood of our humanity. Born lower than the heavenly beings, he fellowships with you and with me. He who rode into Jerusalem was humbled, beaten, crucified on a cross. He tasted death for all people, the just for the unjust. This is the Jesus who comes to you on this Palm Sunday. This is the Jesus who has defeated all the works of the devil. He's released those who were in slavery over their fear of death. This is the bigger Jesus. More than a miracle worker. And more than a prophet. More than an earthly king. More than an angel. Do you know this Jesus is the founder of your faith? I want to offer a both an invitation and a challenge uh, this morning. Have you ever considered uh, what this bigger Jesus means uh, to you? For some of you, it might mean asking uh, Jesus uh, into your heart. He's so much more than the, what the rest of the world uh, would paint. The picture of Jesus that we have in Scripture is far greater than just the, the miracle worker or the or the prophet, or the earthly king. He is the author, founder, and finisher of our faith. He is the Son of God. He is God's expression of love. And for those of you who are ready, maybe even right now, to uh, 
turn from your uh, current path that you are on and uh, turn it over uh, to Christ. This Jesus has paid for your sins. He's given you peace before God. The great price is what is known as our, as our propitiation. Give your heart to him. Confess your sins. Ask him to walk beside you. For those of you who are my fellow Christian brothers and sisters, I'd like you to examine this uh, bigger Jesus as well. Remember that you have been redeemed by the blood of Jesus. Understand that this Christ has sanctified you and he continues to work today to change and mold you into something far greater than you would ever imagine. Understand that this Jesus knows you. He's the merciful and, and faithful priest who now stands at the right hand of God, interceding on your behalf. He understands your temptations. He's been through every single one of them, and he will walk you through them. This Jesus, who continues to do the work of the Father, the just for the unjust. As we enter into this uh, holy, wonderful Easter season, uh, perhaps there is a bigger picture that you're not quite looking at yet. Uh, perhaps this Jesus isn't quite big enough. Um, consider the greater picture that we find in God's Word. He is the author and founder of our faith and of our salvation. As we enter into this holy season, uh, consider that Jesus is far bigger. Thank you for the support of this ministry, your words of encouragement, your prayers, and your financial giving. Since getting out of your house to drop off a check at the church might be difficult, there is a link to give your tithes and your offerings by credit card or direct withdrawal on the YouTube page directly below this video. For those of you who are not a part of the Bethel Alliance Church and may belong to another congregation, remember to support your local ministry. Your support not only builds a local ministry, but it builds your faith. So give generously, give cheerfully, give faithfully. Can you pray with me? Lord, this uh, Christian walk that we are uh, on at times can be very bumpy. We are grateful that you walk with us every step along the way. We ask that through your Holy Spirit, you would reveal to us a greater picture of who you are as we meet these uncertain times. Lord, I pray that you will grow our faith through your Son, Jesus Christ. We pray these things.